each other from the corner of our eyes. Hello, and welcome to Meta Psychics. I'm Liv. This is M. M. Say hi. What's up? And we're your Meta Psychics! I don't know. I'm not awake yet. Good morning. Guten Morgen. Guten Tag. Uh, Remember that time yeah. where there were awkward silences and that's when babies were born? <laughs> Bring me back to 2014. If you know what I'm talking about, you can probably tell how old I am. Well, you're not 13? Maybe I am 13. I didn't say how old I was. Oh, okay. I also don't remember if I'm 13 or 16, so it's getting really confusing. <laughs> oh, yeah, the internet needs to make up their mind on how no, I think young you are. M's dyslexia needs to figure out what numbers are. Because <laughs> I don't know how old you are. It's either 101 or 103, and I think you might be 103 because I might be 13. You're welcome. I thought Dyslexia. I was 101, <laughs> but if we want to up it to 103, I'll be more than happy to accommodate that hypothesis. That dark web fan fiction, weird thing, Reddit, whatever. ADHD and dyslexia. It has to be all the numbers or none of the numbers. Mm -hmm. I get confused with three and five and S's. Eights are really hard for me because for whatever reason, my brain wants to say that they're like... Twos and fives, they flip over, you know? If I you... don't think that happens to normal people. Uh, I always, I t It took me forever to figure out why two plus two equals fish. It's because if you take one, two written without the curly Q bottom and then the other two, and then you like make them do this little I, I like upside down swooshy dance, it looks like a fish. I use that in a lot of my readings as a metaphor. Really? <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that are very like structured in the society and how society tells you to do things. And I was like, just make two plus two equal fish. You can do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I for, for the longest time, I thought people that said that were just saying things to get a rise out of people because they were dominant was a nonsensical statement. But it is sensical indeed. And it's what I think about a lot is that two plus two indeed equals fish. Anyways... <sighs> So today, we are going to be doing part two of our reaction to Sam and Colby's video on the interwebs of Shadow Man Manor. I think it was like the most terrifying night at Shadow Man Manor, right? I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> but in part one, which you can go listen to on the podcast things, I think it's like episode 74, question mark? Um, we talk about just our reaction, not knowing the history of... Oh, I think it's Psychiac's Foud. Psychiac Foud Manor. I think that's how you pronounce it. But Sam and Colby literally in the video are like, we don't know how to pronounce it. And I don't think they say that in the video. They do. The guy pronounces it twice. Yeah, but I don't think that's how it's pronounced. <laughs> it's really hard. I can't okay. do the uh, <laughs> stuff that they do. I might be slightly Welsh in fucking heritage, but I don't, got I don't got that type of... I was like, Sam and Colby don't say it correctly, but the man, the guy dude says it correctly. Yeah, they may or may not make a dick joke. I don't remember. <laughs> they do. Okay, great. Sam and Colby do. Yeah. So what, when I looked it up and listened to the lady on the interwebs say it, that's my phonetical writing of it was sight, key, act, sight, key, act, foud, which is easier for me to say. Anyways, um, so our part one video and podcast is of us just reacting, not knowing the history of the manor and just, I think it was like the second half of their video. And now we're going to talk about the history of it because man, there's some weird shit in here. Really? Yeah. It's interesting. Knowing a little bit more about the history, I kind of just want to do a deep dive into like many different areas of all of this, but we don't have enough time for that. No one has enough time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So we're going to do my Cliff Notes versions. And if there's any sort or like certain parts that we talk about that you guys want more information on, we could do like a little Patreon extra podcast or a little just extra podcast for the, the schlitz and giggles of it, if you, if you know what I'm saying. Also, we apologize if the last podcast was confusing because I'm <laughs> still confused as to what Liv was talking about for most of our video. So yeah. I don't know who she was talking to because I feel like she thought she was talking to us all, but also it changed back and forth. So I'm so confused still. Yeah. Well, I was talking to multiple souls and I didn't have any like understanding or conception of the history. And when I left that day, you watched the history of it. So when you were editing it, I think it made it more confusing for you because people, you were listening to what I was saying based on what you now knew about the history of it. So you're like, well, how even do I when put I this was 
there and we were reacting to it, I had no idea what you were talking about half the time. Because oh. we would be talking about a man and then you would just start talking about someone else. Yeah. And I was like, who are we talking about? That's like if when I'm in my readings, I'll ask someone a question because I'll get done with a piece of information or a statement from a soul or spiritual being or whatever. And then as soon as I ask that person a question or ask them to ask me a question, I immediately start talking about something else because I'm getting more information now. So awkward silence. I try to fill the awkward silence so that no more babies are born or something. I don't know. Well, I feel like after you ask a question, you're less nervous, so you open yourself up, and that's why you get more information. Possibly. So, you're welcome. Great. Because you're nervous about the awkward silence, so that's all you're thinking about, so you can't get it. I mean, we can't have any more awkward babies born. Do you see me? That would, that would be a travesty for the rest of society. Hopefully you guys know what that joke is. <laughs> and you're not just very, very offended. <laughs> or very uncomfortable. Yeah. It makes sense, just like two plus two equals fish. So, moving on, let's start with... The beginning of the video, which is where they talk about a lot of the history of everything. And uh, I thought it was interesting because literally Sam and Colby start out their, I don't know, video show thing with there were constant weird rituals done to get rid of this shadow man. And I just thought that's interesting that Colby would say that immediately. I think it was Sam. Wait, which one's Sam and which one's Colby? Is Sam is the blonde one and Colby's the dark haired one? Because if I, if so, I wrote this all wrong. I'm starting off the day not on a good note because I thought I was supposed to be here at 9.30. However, yesterday I literally told Em and for the past week and a half that I was going to be here at nine and then my brain just immediately was living in a different reality. If you guys don't know already, when you go to a reading with Liv and you ask her for a name, that is why she's bad at names. We've been watching Sam and Colby videos for several months and she still doesn't know which one is which. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sam has blonde hair okay. currently and Colby has the dark hair. He's also taller. So when also, I talk yeah, about yeah. Colby, I may be talking about oh Sam because I'm talking about the blonde haired bloke. Anyways, <laughs> gosh, I'm just not having it today. So we're going to have another confusing podcast because you don't know who we're talking to. <laughs> but this time it's physical people. <laughs> yeah. You, you understand my confusion now with Liv's confusion. <laughs> so they start off the historical aspect of the video, the backstory, if you will, by saying that there were constant weird rituals done to get rid of this shadow man. And I was like, ooh, oh, ooh, what shadow man? I don't understand. Mind you, as soon as I started watching the history of this stuff, this weird creepy dude thing like walked up to me and I was like, I'm gonna ignore you because that's weird. So if you guys are new to the podcast, we are twin flame psychic mediums and comedians and we react to and talk to all things spiritual, paranormal, metaphysical, and such. So it's what that's uh, why we did the first video in, in case some of you are newer and are confused. Well, wait, who was this dark thing that was near you while you were doing this research? <laughs> Dude, just, literally. Just fly by that one and not talk about it. <laughs> I just, well, yeah, that's what I wanted to do was fly by it and not talk about it. I just you brought it up. Ignored it. It's one of my an anecdotes of information that when I first started watching the rest of the video to Wait, get. Was it the shadow man? <sighs> yeah, I think it was the one that was in the one room that we reacted to. The so are there multiple shadow people? You know, that's what I wanted to talk about, too, is <laughs> literally... One of the points that I'm going to get to is that Sam and Colby thought that when they originally started doing the research on the manor before they went there, they're like, yeah, we thought that there was only one shadow man. But actually, according to the tour guides, there is multiple. So I think that's funny because we both perceived that there are like multiple shadow men or like shadow people and that it is related to certain political and characteristics of the people and the time in which the manor existed and uh yeah i wrote in the first description for the what part one video on youtube that shadow man or shadow men and i did not even think about that mm. mm -hmm. so just being spiritually fondled it's fine by dark things dark things told you to write that or things that don't want other people to not know about the dark things I don't know. I, I, did, I did. I entirely just ignored the fact that there was a dark thing there. I was going to make an Instagram post to our patrons about it. And I was like, nah, I'm not going to ruin did. their days. About the dark man? Yeah. I watched it. I did not try to post that on there. I literally hit discard. I watched it. 
Well, I'm <laughs> really glad that it didn't discard even when I literally hit discard. Did you hit discard after you posted? <laughs> no, I didn't even post it. I just hit discard and then didn't post it. Well, I watched it, so you did something. <laughs> Or something else did something because I literally hit discard. Nah, I think you hit posted it and then you were like, wait! And then you tried to discard it, but it was already posted, you know? No, I did not post I'll it. I'll believe you, so. <laughs> so I ignored the dark thing and it posted my Instagram, so whatever. That's what happens when you ignore the dark things. It posts on your in Instagram. So during this video, there are two tour guides. The one man, his name is Lee, and then the other woman... I could be wrong and correct me if I am. There was a really nice blonde haired woman that was also a guide historian person that talked to Sam and Colby during the video and she did not have a name the entire time. So I feel like Sam and Colby just forgot what the name was or didn't actually ask her or she didn't want it to be on the TV, but. Okay. Do you remember what her name is? I'm equally as bad as names. I don't know what the other guide's name is. His name is Lee, the big guy. I just know that Sam and Colby's name is, you know? <laughs> well, you're ahead of me, but they literally put Lee, tour guide, Lee, historian, like all of this other stuff at the bottom of the screen when he would talk intermittently throughout their video. Not once did I see the blonde lady's name on there. So that is what she's going to refer to be referred to as, is the blonde lady. Okay. She has no name. And her name was Mystery. Oh, we could call her Mystery. So when you walk into the house, it's set up to be, to... When you walk into the house, it's set up to recreate a 1645 household setting. The house itself, the Site Act Foud, was constructed in the 1500s, making it roughly 500 years old, give or take. Um, in 1548, the majority of the home was built for the Pr Pritchards, and it was Colonel Edward Pritchard's father, I believe, who owned the home first in 1548. But it was extended with multiple additions in 1628 and was built as a semi-fortified household. And I want to put stronghold question mark because there's a literal armory in this place. That's cool. Yeah. It's like this little weird room that has a staircase that goes down to a basement because that's not scary. So are there multiple generations of Pritchards? I want to say yes. So I then didn't... which Mr. Pritchard were we talking to? I think we and... were talking to... Colonel Edward Pritchard. Were we talking to multiple Mr. Pritchards? <laughs> Possibly. Okay. Because <laughs> the little man with the hat that's different from the man that we saw in the meeting room is uh, saying yes. Okay. Because for the cute. longest time, I was like, if you're Mr. Pritchard and they're Mr. Pritchard, then who are you? <laughs> I'm Squidward. I'm Squidward. I'm Squidward. 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 And he just laughs at me. And I'm like, that's it's not funny. I want to know. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that you see him laughing too because. I get it. <laughs> and then they went dun 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 because Lee, the one tour guide who's like this very nice burly guy, said that the manor could have been haunted up to 5,000 years ago. However, there was no supporting statement given after that. So I don't, I mean, it's England. Everything in England's old. I feel like our perception as Americans or people that live on a place in which licking doorknobs is illegal. So is Edward Pritchard the one with the long beard? I believe so. Are they both? Do they both have long beards? Who? The souls that we're talking to or Lee the tour guide? The Mr. Pritchards. I'm Squidward. It's <laughs> the other one doesn't... The, the, the first man that we see when we first start the reaction video with the like floppy hat and the tan shirt and he's like older and chubbier has like more of a gray short beard whereas Edward Pritchard has more of a like long dark beard. The first guy... I saw him with brown hair. Yeah. Did you see him younger or older? Younger. I see him older. Probably like 40. Mm. But also, it could have been 500 years ago. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But his, his beard is brown and his hair is brown. He's not my age. He's older than me, but he's not like a gray man, oh. like a gray old man. Well, I don't think he's gray gray, but I feel like his brown hair is turning gray and it's like oh, a light okay. brown like your color. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's, I think there's pictures in the video, right? I don't think they're accurate. I think they're just silly pictures that they put in there. I don't know. I thought the Mr. The Edward Pritchard guy was the right one because they also used, what, it, like King Charles or King Henry. King Charles is mentioned in the video. So they use a picture of him too. 
Yeah. So I figured that was the same picture because they used the same picture of the guy with the long beard. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I just thought it was interesting that I saw a man with a beard and then they used a picture of a guy with a beard, a long beard, because <laughs> it's not normal for a dude to have a long beard, <laughs> at least for us. Yeah. I mean, back then it was warmth, so. Mm. Gross. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> if I was a man, if I were a man. I'd have a beard and it would be luscious. So historical time frame and culture of the shadow men manor. So when you're approaching the manor, you'll notice these sort of protection marks that look like X's or hashes littering practically every nook and cranny of the building. And there's roughly 200 or more of these little protection marks everywhere. And I just also want to talk about how hashes is like the hash slinging slasher so the entire time when my brain made that connection of the silly funnies i was like oh the hash slinging the slash slinging i just had images of nosferatu like graffitiing things with a crayon in their house Mm -hmm. these are very different than that (laughs) oh for sure Mm -hmm. yeah anyways from the 1500s which is the time frame in which the house originated throughout that point in history and into the 18th century the belief in witchcraft and the existence of dark entities and evil spirits was big it was a huge cultural thing back then in wales during that time so people thought anywhere air could get in an evil entity could too so doors windows chimneys and attics were all places of concern for people of this time so that is the explanation of why there are so many protection marks everywhere because if you got a giant freaking manor and a lot of windows and doors and attics they're gonna put a lot of protection marks everywhere because that was just how they thought they're like we gotta make sure that this place is fortified like vitamin d calcium plus fortified so people would place the protection marks in all of the nooks and crannies that they thought evil could sneak into In the video, Sam and Colby refer to these as, quote, witch marks, which may be correct in some respect. However, there are many different types of marks, and they're collectively called, in the Welsh understanding, I believe, as apotropaic or apotropaic marks. And that name literally translates to to turn away evil. Well, there's multiple different kinds, and they say that in the video. The Mm -hmm. lady confirms it. There's, like, weird Celtic-looking knot things, and they believed that demons would get caught in them because they wouldn't be able to find their way out yeah i'm so glad that you remember that because i was gonna get into the three different marks that are in the house (laughs) because i thought it was pretty cool i was like oh wow they're not just witches marks they're like apotropaic i don't know if we should be like apotropaic marks or just like apotropaics is it like facebook or the facebook you know what i'm saying no so (laughs) You can find three different types of these marks, and they are as follows. Marion marks, burn marks, which is the mark specifically that Sam and Colby refer to as, quote, witches marks, and demon traps, which is what Em was just talking about with the little woven thingies that Nosferatu leaves everywhere. So Marion marks are overlapping Vs, and they were known to be drawn or, you know, scratched into things to invoke the protection of the Virgin Mary which I think is cool because religion is great. And a lot of, I mean, all of these people, I want to say were like Catholics or Roman Catholics or Christians in some respect or sort, but they still did these like things that people would say, like Sam and Colby were like, they're witches marks. And it's like, well, they weren't made by witches. They were made by people that like were trying to invoke the protection of the Virgin Mary, which I feel like a lot of people wouldn't think about when they see things like that. Got you. So then who is the woman in the attic reciting spells? So. Was she praying? Well. (laughs) Which is technically like old Catholicism, even new Catholicism has a lot of witchcraft uh, inspiration, I guess. Well, I just (laughs) think it's interesting to talk to the idea of or at least recognize the history that that religion you know to christian catholicism wasn't always the main religion and especially over in like the celtic ish nations of wales ireland scotland things like that their ideas and traditions still carried over given the fact that they were probably if you ask them devout christians or catholics so i just think it's interesting to have 
something that two boys in a English manner in the UK or not English, but a Welsh manner would be like, these are witches marks, but one of them literally is to invoke the protection of the Virgin Mary, which is not what I think most people would refer to in the same sense as witches. Right. Yeah. I just thought it was interesting. I also tried to scribble them in my book and uh, I couldn't do it right. To protect yourself from the thing standing and watching you do research? Maybe <laughs> subconsciously. Yeah, you get trapped in your weird Celtic knot things. Well, I was doing it wrong, <laughs> and there was this woman that was standing over me that was like, "You're doing it wrong. You're gonna fuck everything up. You need to do this right. If you're gonna doodle, you better doodle right." And I was like, "Witchcraft." Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was annoying because it, when you're trying to, they kind of look like if you were trying to make the bubble letter W or M because they're the overlapping Vs, but I tried to do it in my notebook and I was like, I feel weird. And then I scribbled out the ones that were wrong and tried to make one that looked kind of nice. So it kind of looks like a cool W. Anyways, the next one is burn marks. And these burn marks, which is what you were just talking about in The Witch's Addict or what Sam and Colby refer to as the witch's marks or the witch's burn marks, whatever, they were made historically culturally whatever with various things there wasn't like one certain thing that you use to make a burn mark um and the concept was to bring about a magic light illuminating dark places to ward off evil and dark spirits themselves so that was the concept behind it got you yes For the burn marks yes mm -hmm. so um but when we get to the addict part there's a little more severity in the fact that there's so many in the addict and what yeah. the people that now tour and give tours and histories of the place think the reasoning behind it was so it was closed off mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the words of sam and colby they were like why is it that something was bricked off from the outside trying to keep something in it was something like that the drama yeah very very dramatic i just liked quoting their dramaticness so the last one of the uh i have to look at it to say it apotropaic marks is the demon traps which em was talking about um so they're mesh designs and these marks were specifically created with the idea to create something that would trap evil in it forcing it to follow endless lines forever so those are the little like hash marks or like x's that overline and lap kind of like tic-tac-toe but sideways um but then they showed a couple other images of more like elaborate ones and honestly the only thing i could think about was like that trending art I mean, maybe it has always been trending, but I noticed a couple of years ago that it was more cool where people would draw entire pictures that looked like things, but without picking up their pens. That's what you're talking about with this demon trap? That's just what it made me think of. Oh. Are people just- it Looks like a Celtic knot. Drawing really cool, uh, what is it? No, they tell you to do that in art class so that you can like use your brain or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> that you remembered in art school. Yeah, it was one of those uh, like- traumatic things that I had to do. Just mm. draw a face without picking up your pen. Ah, It's not a fun experiment. Well, you were drawing demon traps. If someone, maybe if they worded it differently. I was not very good at it. No, no demon was getting trapped in there. I was picking up my pen. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the interesting thing about demon traps though is that unlike the other marks, they're interesting because they are used to protect a space from the inside out. So the mark isn't used to protect oneself or a certain area. It's more like overlapping, I right. guess, or not overlapping, specific. Anyways, so Sam and Colby then say, for 500 years, the inhabitants have been trying to ward off evil spirits from the manor. And I was like, <sighs> have what? they been trying to ward off evil spirits or, because I just, I feel like that sentence gives the invocation of that the people always knew that there was scary things and they had to be scared at all points in time. But honestly, I feel like it's just, it was their thing, you know? What was their thing? Put in marks on stuff. It was their belief. It's not, oh. I don't think that they did it as a protection, not like, it was a proactive thing, not a reactive thing. And I just feel like that sentence makes them, makes people think that. Well, I mean, if they thought they were demons in their house, they would be trapping them inside, wouldn't they? Exactly. They were trying to keep <laughs> things out of their house. But it, the way that they phrase that sentence, at least the way I take it, is that they give the implication that the people that used to live there 500 years ago with the Pritchard family, family etc., were like, they had bad encounters. So they were like, because this happened, now we're going to do this. And it's like, no, no, no. It's most likely that they just did that 
because it was their thing. It's what you do. Like, did you guys know how you hang bells on doors? That That is not just... Is that called witches' bells? Yes. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. I but was like, are that what you're talking about? People do it for Christmas or just put bells on their doors because they're like, I want to know if someone's coming in the house. And like, it's like, no, 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 no. Before- well, you put the bells on the door so that your dog rings it and tells you they have to go potty. Many different <sighs> reasons of why people put bells on their doors. But the original reason for putting bells on your doors was to keep the spirits out. Various spirits that people didn't want in their house. And it's not because they were already in the house. It's just because they're like, I don't want them to be in the house. So here are the bells. It's not Christmas decorations that people forgot about. I mean, maybe now today it is, but the original origin of doing that, decorating in that way, was uh, for the spiritual feng shui. So let's get into the family that was most talked about in the video itself. Tired of long waits and rushed care at the ER and urgent care clinic? Next time, stay home and let Dispatch Health bring the power of the hospital to you. I call Dispatch Health. A care team of medical professionals actually come to your house. They're the same caliber of people that you would see if you were at a hospital or an urgent care. Dispatch Health can treat most non-life-threatening emergencies. They can do the x-rays, they can do stitches. Urinary tract infections, blood tests, urinalysis, ultrasound. It's almost everything that they can do at the ER. You never feel rushed. They're there for you and only you. I felt like their only patient. And it costs no more than a trip to urgent care because Dispatch Health is covered by most insurance, including Medicare. See if we serve your home at DispatchHealth.com. Dispatch Health really went above and beyond. It's wonderful to have care come to your home. House calls are back, and they're better than ever. Learn more at DispatchHealth.com. Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. Can I be real for a second? That goal you have to exercise and eat better, you really can do it. But nobody is going to do it for you. And nobody has to, because you can do it if you have the right tools and a community that cares about helping you get results. And that's us, Beachbody. It's as convenient as your TV or laptop, but you need to decide that you're worth it. Let us help you succeed. Here's how. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great. The Pritchards were a gentry family with noble relations, meaning that they made their money from the land, but were also descended from a Welsh prince. Which makes it interesting because, let me first explain what gentry is. Because some people that aren't like super history buffs or not into like kings and queens and cool things like that uh, won't know. So gentry are people of a good social position, specifically in the UK. And they are the class of people next below the nobility in position and birth. They are below nobles and other distinguished landholders. Uh, were the gentries. So it's nobles, gentries, and then the gentries have different subcategories. So you have squires, clergy, baronets, and knights, whose income traditionally came from tenants on their land. So that's why it says that they made their money from the land. So the Pritchard family was the focus family in the video, like I said, but they were casually and calculatingly feuding with other Welsh families during the time. And it's interesting because... (laughs) The feuds that would happen in Wales, because they talk about how the the house was built onto the manor itself, and it was kind of fortified. It was fortified because back then, families that were of gentry and nobility status would literally just have like Peaky Blinder type fights all the time. It was just their shtick. They called them feuds, which is, I think, hilarious. So I find it interesting that of all of the families, the Pritchards were a gentry family, But if the feuds that were happening in Wales back then on a regular, just casual basis was between the gentry and the nobilities, I think it's interesting because the Pritchards were a gentry family, but with nobility heritage or noble heritage. So that might have given them a little bit of like above everybody else that they were trying to like. Oh, is that why people were angry at them? (laughs) It's probably one of the reasons because we talk about that in our reaction video of how certain people didn't like them and would like put the the what is it the um pentagram on the stone wall outside of their castle the hooligans exactly yeah in our podcast last podcast that woman in the attic was talking about how there were like angry people outside that she felt like she needed to protect things from yeah so that's one of the reasons why there might be masses of angry people towards them because they were probably like 
you know, Welsh nobility and gentry feuds, like gang fights, basically. Jesus. <laughs> but like 1500s Welsh gang fights. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. And I mean, if at that time, too, all of that spiritual witchcraft, you know, devil things that people were scared of was a big thing, if you were a part of a different family that was trying to gain power or whatever over the Pritchard family, they were going to be like, oh, I'm going to draw a pentagram on your thing and all of the dark things are going to be outside of your door. You better put more witches marks in your attic, bitch. So was, does that mean that it was facing the house and not away from the house? I don't remember. What did they talk about? They said that there was a pentagram on the wall of the outer, like, whatever house. The grounds, yeah. However, when they took it off of the wall, mm -hmm. no one noted which way it was facing. Because if it's facing a certain direction, it would bring things to it versus away from it. So it's either used for protection or someone, like, wanted to screw them over. Mm, it's probably the latter. Because that's what um, the vagabond in the addict was talking about. He was like, ooh, tea. Let's see what I can do here. Yeah, but that's what was in their video saying that they didn't know which way it was facing. Ah, uh, interesting. So I just thought it was funny that they're like, casually, there was a lot of feuds going on. Not wars, just feuds. And it was between the same people that were trying to give money to the crown or whatever and how it works. So next, let's go to the witch's curse. So... In the 1980s, there was a bundle of items found in the fireplace of the servants' hall. These items included a hare's foot, two big clumps of human hair, a bone, a piece of scarlet cloth, and a twisted piece of paper. And through the pictures that, if they're correct, are on the video, kind of looked like a pureline, pureline biscuit. You know, like those little wafer cookies that have the chocolate wrapped in them? Those oh, I have no idea what that is. What? They're so good. It kind of looks like a candy cane wafer chocolate biscuit thingy. They got like Hazelnoose flavored ones. And I'm like, oh God, they're so good. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> so if you watch their video, just to clarify, Sam and Colby make it sound like these items were only recently discovered. However, the way I interpreted what the blonde lady was saying to them, it's that these items were discovered in the 1980s during the renovation that happened for the manor itself. But what had happened recently I mean, given the fact that it had happened recently when they were there filming the video, the blonde lady specifies that the she had proposed an idea. And that idea was to take the twisted piece of paper that they'd found in the bundle with the rest of the things in the 1980s and put it under a black light. So when they opened up the twisted piece of paper and put it under a black light, they revealed words on the page. And the only legible word was us. And this has led to the people that own the building's hypothesis that this was a written spell. What do you think? So was it a spell or was it not a spell? I don't know. That's why you're here. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Well, it, I told you that there was some weird lady that wasn't really there in the attic say, spewing off spells. Spewing off spells. But it could also be a prayer because Catholicism and witchcraft aren't that different, you know? Uh, <laughs> Ooh, be careful. We just well, lost a lot of people, maybe. We literally talked about angels. <laughs> yeah, you're true. <laughs> I mean, anyways, uh, well, let me give you this tidbit of information. The paper was put into the manor's exhibition cases, and the people who handled it while putting it into the case and things like that, uh, at once putting it away, they experienced bad happenings thereafter. So. What were the bad happenings, Liv? I don't know. I didn't have time to research those. That's well, why I said at the beginning of this, if no, there's I'm, any certain you things you guys... You just talk to your friend that helped you do your research. The big dark scary thing? Yeah. No, I, I mean, think he's the one doing it, no? The absolute scariest thing that is of the scariest of the shared people. Oh, there's people. more? I'm going to talk scary about them. things? Yes. <laughs> Literally. It's not okay. He's the boss of the shadow men. Yeah. He's like the eight foot tall one that's in the meeting room that I'll talk about. Was well, that the one that was trying to talk to them? I don't think so, right? No, it was. Oh, it was? Because we literally, I think in the video, we talk about how it's way bigger and it's well, yeah. like a shadow up against the wall. And when I started watching this and that's exactly what they talked about in the <laughs> meeting room itself, I was like, oh, shit, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not okay. Really annoying, validating things that we saw before knowing about it. I mean, it. they talked about it being eight feet tall when we were reacting to it. Oh, did they? Yeah, that's why I was like, you know how when you put a flashlight really low? Mm-hmm. And it makes, makes them, them bigger. bigger. Mm. Yeah, no, it's big. I don't like it. Freaks me out. 
So, what? What are you talking to? I'm talking to it. It's still not disgusting. I don't know. I feel like there's a bigger batter die, but he's not big. He's just more solid. Is that the one that's in the attic? Dropped in the roof and the floor. Probably. Because that one's heavy. Yeah, there's a cellar. They didn't even talk about the cellar. It's in the basement. Disgusting. Sorry. I'm done. <laughs> so I was like, hey, that's not the same feeling either. This thing is like, like solid, like an absolute unit, you know? In the words of Veronica, you know who you are. I have expired. I have passed away. <laughs> the tall guy that's like looking over our desk right now. It's almost like you took his energy and stretched it. Yeah. You know, good spy versus bad spy, like good spy, bad spy, the little comic from like Cartoon Network or something. Um, no, but okay. Okay. You (laughs) know the silhouette of a witch doctor, like the dudes from the, um, also plague, but the plague doctors. Oh, the one with the weird mask. Yeah. It looks like a giant fucking, uh, outline of a plague doctor. This tall guy. Yeah. He's got a hat on and everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, remember clearly the I have hat. no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> no, it's okay. Just remember the hat, too. But we're yeah. we're going to move on into the servant's kitchen. <laughs> so the door, I believe, that Sam and Colby walk through into the Shadow Man Manor is into the servant's kitchen. And when you walk through this hallway or when you're in the kitchen itself, there's a lot of different things that go on. So one of the things is that the guards, not the guards, the tour guides have seen walking through the entry hallway of the servant's kitchen disembodied feet clad from a different time but they're seen only from the knees down here i would like to talk about that back then knees and ankles were not supposed to be seen so maybe this ghost is just like this is my good side (laughs) you know what if they were like come into my house this is my privacy (laughs) my private time i can do whatever i want look at these ankles they're just that's like their ghostly tinder profile were they female ankles? I don't know. I don't think so. No. But I still find it funny nonetheless. They had like Did long socks them? on and boots, I think. Oh. I don't know. I see like smaller shoes, not necessarily like men's boots. So maybe they were a girl's legs. <laughs> Tinder profile. God. For the ones that are dead. Anyways, so Guide Lee talks about how he saw a girl standing on the cellar cellar stairs in the servant's kitchen. So if you watch the video, there's like this little staircase with a, um, I don't know, I think it has like a cool little wooden gate that keeps people from like tumbling to their desk down there. Um, And he saw the girl standing on that staircase with her hood and a cloak on. So her hood was pushed back far enough on the back of her head that it revealed that she had dark hair and eyes and a pointed chin, which to me sounds witchy, but that's also just my... What sounds like the girl that I was talking to you about that you thought was Maddie. Because I didn't say that who I was talking to was Maddie. I was just seeing this girl with dark hair that looked like she was like younger. Mm-hmm. Does she have a sort of sassy attitude to her? Well, I was seeing the dark rendition of her. Mm. Oh, the scary one. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, because you were like, you're seeing dark Maddie. And I was like, uh, okay. Down the hallway? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember. Mm-hmm. She had gray skin, so that's why she, yep. Not okay. <laughs> She's not the same person. She was something the dark thing was puppeting around because people know about possibly this person you're talking about. Yeah. I put it in the video when he starts talking about her Mm, yeah he estimates her to be around 15 or 16 years of age however they were also to catch they were also able to catch an evp from her which i think is interesting and i guess she like looked into his eyes and then just like went somewhere else but the evp that they were able to catch because they were talking about how oh you can hear when he walks into the door and then like when he walks out and is like asking if he can help somebody um and i guess in that time frame on the evp they caught this girl saying Hello, Mr. Jessup. I've missed you. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely horrifying. And I have a hypothesis about this. Which is? That I want to talk about later, I think. Don't forget. Possibly. Because otherwise you should talk about it now and tell me because I'll forget to remind you. Um, Yeah, we'll talk about it now. So I have a hypothesis that the people that work here, um, I wrote it down in a really nice way. Give me a second shuffles through papers oh yeah so there is just like 
certain people that have seen certain like full-bodied apparitions we'll get to maddie in a second she's also kind of related to the servant's kitchen and the servant's bedroom which is upstairs but i find it interesting specifically in this sort of instance with the like the tour guide lee who saw this girl and she literally said something to him and called him a name i was trying to talk to this girl specifically when I was doing the research notes and I don't know if I did because that seems like a lot of pressure to me but the what was explained to me was interesting because I've been having a lot of like not parallel universes but parallel timelines of like we have existed ha haven't existed and are done existing all at the same time and when Em and I have gone to certain places we'll see people or things out of time but it's like glimpses of something happening in this space but from a different time so it makes me think like is are we able to like see different facets of things of where stuff was or what it used to be even though physically right now we are planted in reality or the present so I wrote what if the soul I know because it was weird and she didn't tell me this until like I got halfway through stuff because I was trying to understand it because I was like why would this soul look at this man and say something so like personal to her but it doesn't mean anything to him and the way she explained it to me was with past lives okay so what if the soul isn't actually looking at you as you are now mm -hmm. but since they know see hear and feel everything and they're from a different time they are looking at another version of you yeah like as a past life so my hypothesis is that lee being greeted by the girl on the cellar stairs and calling him a different name is the same sort of premise of like when we did the reincarnation stories about the fireman who ended up reincarnating with like his buddies that were in his fire brigade when he was actually like a civil war hero or like a civil war general and he ended up going into battle with a lot of the people that were like his friends in his current life so what if it's that lee the tour guide has a past life related to this manner and that's why he works there as a tour guide now yeah i'm glad that you get that well yeah i feel like i explained it really horribly yeah <laughs> can you explain it in a better way um so this woman was seeing lee but she recognized his soul because his soul possibly was a past life of a person that used to live in the manor itself so she was greeting the person that she thought he was in the sense of that's the past life that she knows yes and she's not like it's not that he looks physically now like a person from it's the just past. his energy signature i was talking to you the other day about ha higher self names mm -hmm. it's like that and by talking to me, you just asked me what your higher self's name was. And I was yeah, like, I was that's like, too much pressure. Pull this out for me and tell me what my higher self name is. Because the woman in this video, um, it's the liker of words. Her name is Emily Dexter. She's great. She was talking about you have a higher self name. And it's not necessarily that it's a physical name. It can be a feeling, a uh, image, uh, like any of your like five senses kind of thing. So it's kind of like an energy signature. Oh, green. Oh, it's green. <laughs> that's mine. <laughs> yeah. So that's what this woman is talking to me about. She recognized his energy signature as being the same man that she knew when she was alive. Because he has a past life as that person. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same energy. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you get that. Yeah. But I just think it's really cool. Like, what if I walked up to you and you had no idea who I was and I was like, hello mr hello like whatever and you're like my name's emily and i'm like it was or it is now but it wasn't <laughs> it's how little kids can tell their mom or dad you were my sister in my past life and oh. this was your name and this was me yeah because it's the same feeling around them mm. it's so cute <laughs> yeah that's adorable so i feel like lee actually was mr jessup he just wait what's your your that. higher self name is it purple I don't know. I see pink and white, but that's also just probably my perception of myself. I think it's purple. Okay. Because you would be the opposite of me. Is purple the opposite of green? Green is physical. 
physical energy. Purple is spiritual energy. Yeah, but I think green also is like a love of things. Physical love. Yeah. And pink is non-physical love. It's like unconditional of like all things. But I could be purple. <laughs> I also just like pink, so egotistical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why are you staring at me? I'm waiting for you to talk. Okay. I didn't <laughs> know if you were going to talk more about my weirdness. You don't want to accept my weirdness, do you? So. I mean, I could. No, you can't. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so let's talk about the shadow people hauntings. I already mentioned that Sam and Colby originally thought that there was only one shadow man when they began their research, but according to the tour guides, there are many. And at this point in the video, Sam and Colby like run this silhouette of this guy that has a hat on and like cloaky ish kind of and then they like are dramatic about it of course and like make a whole bunch of them fill up the whole screen they're like we thought it was just one shadow man insert silhouette here and then they're like but it's many insert cheesy lots of silhouettes here <laughs> like the like the brady bunch of scary people and um that annoyed me because i didn't literally like pay attention to it when we were reacting to the video the first time but the silhouette that they use to represent their shadow man to men is uh i literally wrote in my notes oh while watching the images of the shadow man it looks exactly like the priest dude i saw and during the reaction video oh so you were seeing a dark thing or a dark version of a thing because i keep thinking i someone was telling me that you were seeing a weird rendition of the past yes and it's interesting because the priest person that i saw of the weird rendition of the past was looked just like an actual person however the scary thing in the in the room that i was looking at looked like the shadow of this priest person yeah. which freaked me out which makes sense of why i thought that this thing was interrupting the things that were happening in the past to tell you a different narrative yes which is <laughs> Scary. <laughs> yeah. Well, you that's going to be brought up again when we finally get to the meeting room. But it was weird because I was trying to like figure out how to explain the person that I was seeing. Like, I'm like, okay, maybe he's a priest, but I don't know anything about Catholic Christian religion or anything like that. So I literally spent like 40 minutes trying to look up the certain things like the dress attire that the person that I was seeing in this like reaction residual haunting thing in the meeting room was. So it turns out that the dude that I was seeing in the video, he's wearing a, it's called like a commercial collar, a Saturno hat and a cassock. So a Saturno hat also called a Capelli Romani. They call it a Saturno hat because it looks like the shape of Saturn kind of, but it's a prelates hat with a wide circular brim and a rounded crown. And it's worn outdoors in some countries by Catholic clergy. And they mostly wear it when dressed in a cassock, which is the close-fitting ankle-like garment worn, especially in Roman Catholic and Anglican churches, by clergymen and laypersons assisting in services. Literally, the dude that I saw was wearing the stuff that, like, I don't know, clergymen wear. Oh, do you think he was a priest then? Of some sort, okay. I assume, in this weird, like, residual haunting that I was seeing, whether it was influenced by the scary dark thing in the corner or not was the dark thing there when he was alive i think that's when it started to be there because it's associated with him mm, maybe that's why he can control it what do you mean is it associated with him or is it lying to you because that's the other thing is when i saw that that residual haunting it was like Edward Colonel Edward Pritchard was so distraught and upset that he was talking to the clergyman about it's something associated that to the memory he may have um like regretted I literally said like this man is so upset that he would have sold his soul to the devil if that so was, I was a like, thing who am I talking to and this thing that thing stepped forward so I was like can I talk to someone else please <laughs> <laughs> and this woman's telling me she's showing me the memory that you're seeing it's associated to the memory that's why it's able to show you such a clear memory because mm. it's usually like skittery when a dark thing shows you things mm -hmm. but it's associated to the memory itself because it was a really bad one yeah it was really weird and then he turned into talking to sam and colby and i was like that's weird cool trick dude mm -hmm. 
So yeah, but I just thought it was interesting that they use this sort of silhouette in their video and that's literally the silhouette of the scary thing that I was perceiving. And it also is the same sort of silhouette, but you know, not silhouette of the priest clergyman that I was seeing that was talking to the guy. So yeah, this woman is really pretty. She has her, she has brown hair and half of it's pulled up in a bun. Is her name Mary? I have no idea. Ask her. I don't know. That you oh. <laughs> I don't know. She's in like a house dress. It's like white or cream. Oh, she's not dressed fancier. No. Okay. That's fine. Do they have like servants? Mm-hmm. They have the servants hall, the servants kitchens. The servants. Can a woman be a servant? Yeah. Maddie was a servant, quote unquote, who we're going to talk about next. Oh, <laughs> looks at soul <laughs> that I can't see. <laughs> casually rolls eyes to corner are you maddie (laughs) i don't think it's maddie maddie has a more certain energy she has a more uncertain energy Mm. it's more like mystical interesting and her name was mystery so So, (laughs) i just thought that it was interesting that the the person thing was reminiscent of what i was seeing because that freaked me out we're gonna move on to Because we were talking about some of the shadow people, but I want to talk about the maid, Maddie. Yeah, we're going to talk about the maid, Maddie. This just in, breathing oxygen is linked to staying alive. And today's top story, if you like drinks, you're going to love Drizzly. Drizzly is the number one app for alcohol delivery, where you can compare prices on the biggest selection of beer, wine, and spirits, and get them all delivered to your door in under 60 minutes. Sources say that it all can be done on the Drizzly app or on drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com. Back to you, Tom. Come here. Natural Balance presents a head-tilting, tail-wagging audio experience made for dogs. Want to play? <laughs> Good dog. This ad was scientifically designed to make your dog happy, just like Natural Balance dog food. Visit naturalbalanceinc.com to learn more. Who was supposedly the housekeeper? However, there isn't any records of her besides stories and hearsay. There's not like any written documentation. Allegedly, she died in an accidental kitchen fire, and she is thought or known for causing excessive feelings of grief and sadness so much so that she's made two grown men cry yeah i saw that (laughs) yeah one was like the ex fire chief or chief of police for one of the people fire police people and not fire ex chief of police somewhere around the area locally and then i guess a south african rugby player (laughs) and they were like do you know what rugby is, Americans? Gotta tape your ears down so they don't get ripped off. That's all <laughs> I know about rugby. <laughs> I did not know about that about rugby. Yeah, all the cartoons that I watched, you say you have to tape your ears down because that one guy in that was held back for several years, he had his ear ripped off. I don't know if it's actually true. It was in a cartoon. So was yeah. his name Picasso? No. Oh, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Picasso ripped his own ear off. He was upset. Anyways, <laughs> so there is a cradle in Maddie's room that is in the servants' quarters, um, which is why the room has two beds in it. And it is also known to shake violently back and forth. Not like rock by baby, but like this thing's about to go and explode into a million pieces rocking back and forth. So well, it's scarier. Is that the thing that's in the but I think so. It might be like the only thing that can make it move because they're like, if this thing moves, then maybe they'll get them to move the rest of the furniture so that I can seep into the floors like a weird dumbwaiter. Yeah, because I see a shadow underneath it that does it. <laughs> like when Sniffles has a closed door and you just see her little foot <laughs> underneath the door and she's like, no closed doors. It's got to rev up in order to do it. Yeah. Because it's a really like weird sounding spirit. Very gloopy like, and staticky. Wee-oo, wee-oo. That's the sound it makes. Disgusting. But it's like, it's like unstable, but like goopy, low pitch. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, and I guess she is. She has shown herself in the servants' kitchen a lot of times um, because that's where the fire took place. So there have been three accounts of Maddie, and I think they only talked about a couple of them. 
So I guess in the one corner of the room that Em and I both felt weird at, they also put the little like yes or no doodad paranormal yeah, equipment Yeah, they got thing. a new thing. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, it has a weird name. You like can tap on it or like do some sort of thing to it to make it say yes or no. And it also has like emotions, like emojis that you can choose from, mm-hmm. you know? So Yeah, but they put that in the corner of the room where people have excessive feelings of sadness and grief making grown men cry so i mean if i was a soul i feel like like a a, a spirit i'd be like i'm gonna make you cry today you think you're cool you even eat your cornflakes without any milk anyways um so there was a man his name was um jeff hello my name is jeff and he awoke one night freezing in the middle of you know his room and once his eyes adjusted to the light in that room He saw a figure of a woman, and she stood there in the corner of the room, the corner that people get freaked out in, and uh, just impolitely stared at him, make him very uncomfortable. And then she started, like, levitating closer to him, and then when he got more scared, she just was like, okay, I guess maybe I'm not going to make you cry tonight because it's 3 in the morning and you're already kind of, like, a baby. And then just, like, receded and, like, what is it? Uh, Disappeared into the wall. That's Maddie. Uh, that's what they say. She okay. was fun sized is what I wrote. So only about five feet tall. And she had a white bonnet and impolitely stared at him until she disappeared into the wall. And that's when I had that weird revelation that the soul that of, of the girl in the cellar in the kitchen that looked at Lee and was like, oh, Mr. Jessup, I've missed you was like, actually, no, that was you just in a past life. So she's looking at you, but she's also looking at more than you. So then what was that? I don't know. That's just, um, I don't think that was Maddie, but I honestly don't know because I'm listening to something on my left hand side and I feel like it is Maddie because she is more like, she kind of has a no nonsense attitude Yeah, and she's like, that wasn't me. She like shakes her head. There's a dark thing that went down the stairs. Oh, so it was a dark thing that was freaking him out. Yeah. It was different than the other ones that we've talked to so far. Hmm. Is that the one that was in the stairwell when we got up there first? What do you mean? The one that made it look like Maddie but wasn't Maddie. Remember when we looked down the hallway and you're like, there's something freaky looking out across yes. the corner. Yeah. Sorry, I'm closer. Yeah, no, I made a joke in the video about like, like speedy. how it needs to get its shit together because it's not fooling anybody type thing. It like is black. It looks like electricity and its eyes are red. It's really fast. <laughs> Super fun like transports itself but it's not transporting it's just going really fast vanish sorry (laughs) it's next to me (laughs) yeah that's gross what you see it um i'm making it go away or trying to yeah because i was like that doesn't seem like maddie and maddie's like annoyed by it (laughs) Mm -hmm. but like what was it and then it like ran down the stairs and i was like oh hello how do you do? Oh, can I take your hat, sir? Stay May a I while. Take your hat, sir? <laughs> Speaking of things running down the stairs, there's also a little boy that people see. So, yes. like the one that was Those under the fun. kitchen. I was telling you about that. In the ghost hunts, they like there are people and seeing this little boy peering around like the doorway, and they'll be like, "There's a boy there," and no one else sees it, and you just hear <laughs> running away, and it's hilarious. God, I wish that happens to us. <laughs> oh, I just wish that I was that boy. I would love what to What does be the boy obnoxious. look like to you? I see him as wearing like a tan tunic and like l- darker colored pants that might have been like overall-ish or like some sort of suspendery thing maybe. And he has brown hair and blue eyes. Is his hair like Justin Bieber? Hair? Yes. Okay. Like the bowl cut, but like <laughs> yeah. fashionable. It's very flat. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. His hands are dirty too. He was the ones that was tugging on um, Colby's pockets because he was like, in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He also, like, in one of one point, they're like standing in the doorway of Maddie's room because they're like, oh, it's so cold. It's so cold. And uh, one of the girls is like, did you just touch my leg? And I was like, oh, he's so cute. (laughs) And then they heard like running. Yeah, or like hilarious. some sort of like absolutely knock. hilarious. Yeah, because I was listening to the video and I was able to hear some of the like knocks and things that they were talking about. So I thought that was interesting. But um, another thing about Maddie and her room is that I 
I guess that there was a boy who visited the um, the manor, and according to Rose Williams, I think that's the person that they said Rose, but I'm not entirely sure. She was the last inhabitant to have the manor, um, and before it was turned over to whatever people or society thing that owns it to preserve it um there used to be a wrought iron bed frame in the corner where people feel that like overwhelming feeling of sadness or whatever Mm -hmm. so i don't know who i was talking to when i said i was like in a bed or something because i felt like i was in the bed that was in the room but according to this little excerpt the bed that maddie had was like a wrought iron bed with a very ornate sort of like back bed frame and There was a boy who visited the manor and afterwards when he got home, he was telling his father about how in that room he saw a woman in a wrought iron bed and she was very sad and very sick. And that would be Maddie because after the fire happened, Uh apparently she didn't immediately die from her wounds. They brought her back upstairs to her bed and she died in the wrought iron bed. Hence the feelings of sadness and whatever. Yes. That you were having in your lungs. Yes. Yeah, because I was like, it sounds like it could be related to a fire, but I also like, well, and don't I know, felt <laughs> like I had things on my skin, like a rash or something, which is why I was like, this is weird. But yeah, that's why I was getting confused because you were talking about Maddie being a little child, and then you started talking about how she died, and then I was like, oh, now we're really confused. Who is she talking to? It's definitely two different people. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. So I don't know. I feel like I was getting cross information from two different people, but. I thought it was interesting that they brought her upstairs in the bed and I was like, oh, that's maybe what it feels like when you have burns in there oozing. Anyways, that's a fun thing to think about. (laughs) Uh, They also hear murmurs in the hallway and there is this like marriage chest, which is what I wanted to ask you if um, the woman you were talking to a couple minutes ago was named Mary because Edward Pritchard's wife's name was Mary Mansell. No, she's someone else. Okay. Got it. She is a more solid feeling, too. This woman that I was talking to has a very somber, like, nervous... Persona. ...energy. Mm. Like, she's worried about things. Ah. Uh. The woman Oh, so you're she might have been more of, like, a servant, which is why yeah. you were asking. Okay. Yeah. Well, she was showing me Cinderella. Yeah. I got it. So that's why I asked you if she was a servant. Mm. Uh, the woman you're talking about has more of a, like, authoritative energy. Authority. Yeah, and she wears her hair sort of similarly, almost kind of like Katara a little bit, but, like, in a bun. Do they, like, wear bonnets? They used to, yeah. She has a bonnet on. I think Wait. Maddie had a bonnet. I don't know. It's very <laughs> confusing talking to these souls. Yeah, they all look very similar. Yes. So, um, it's not Maddie. So, I okay. Don't know. <laughs> well, let's get into more of the shadow people that don't necessarily have like a lot of stuff revolved around them. Cause we know who Maddie is. There's the girl in the cellar who was like, oh, Mr. Jessup. Um, but there is also a man in a cloak that likes to walk into the servant's kitchen store. And I guess Lee actually saw the cloaked man once and was down there by himself. Or he was, he saw someone walk in the door. And Wait, he, are these shadow people we're talking about? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but there, there's not like a name associated so, with the haunting. You saw a shadow with a cloak. Lee, the tour yeah. guide guy, was yeah. upstairs because when you walk in the front door to get to the servant's kitchen, there's a stairway that goes up. And he said that he was upstairs and he saw a man in a cloak come walking through the door like he owned the place and was like, oh, maybe it's somebody that's like new because I'm new here and I don't know them and I don't know who they are. So he like walked down the stairs to like go ask the man what he wanted and no one was there. But it happens a lot that this cloaked man just walks right into the kitchen and then walks straight through. Do you think he's residual? I feel like he is from hunting because I feel like he has like pheasants or like birds or something to eat. Yeah, because I keep asking this woman what's lies and what's not lies. Mm. <laughs> That's cool. And I see this man in, he's like in a fancy coat thing. Yeah. He has brown hair and he is has scary energy. And when I say scary energy, he's very like forward presenting male energy, which is intimidating to me. Mm. So <laughs> Yeah, I understand. Like if you were in a room having a meeting and he was not there for like the first 10 like, minutes, he would just be like- voice 
rough. What are we talking about? Yeah. This is what we're doing. And you're like, oh, hello, he's here. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and another one walks up the stairs and down the hall with very heavy footsteps. Another cloaked figure that is seen a lot. Now, the biggest one that we've been talking about the most is the shadow person seen in the Great Hall. And it is, as I put, huge. So the Great Hall is the room that we saw I saw the residual haunting and you saw it as an active haunting the whole time where Sam and Colby experienced the super intense EMF reading where Colonel Pritchard, as we interpret it, drains the room of energy to keep the dark thing that is across the wall that all of these people see all the time in its place. Yeah, you were seeing a memory and I was seeing Mr. Pritchard sitting on the bench. (laughs) Yes. Yes, you were. So it says a lot of people will see this shadow figure as eight feet tall. And his colleagues and almost everybody else that has been on scheduled tours have seen it as a black void. One of the other groups, when asked if they were seeing it too, because Lee saw it, they all looked or went to look at it and it just shot off the right-hand side of the room. And it's always in the corner that we saw it in too. Because it's associated to that memory in the room. Mm. But it sounds like... um it sounds like it's really fast and then it gets stretched out. So like if you had a motorcycle rev up to like go really, really fast in like 0.3 seconds and then drive away from you, that's what it sounds like. So it's a lot of energy in one space, but it's also being pulled so that they appear bigger. Yeah. It's like a vroom, uh. which is what makes things like poltergeisty in that room because it has a lot of energy here so it just like puts things in the vacuum to yeah and move things because i feel like things move in there Mm, possibly i don't think they talked about things moving but i don't like it it makes me scared um there is also the man in the armory who aside from the eight foot tall spirit that is in the meeting hall is super scary this one they say is, quote, the meanest spirit. There's a little child that saw it. I remember them talking about it. Yeah. Does it have scary eyes? Well, no, I think it's actually a person. <laughs> um, so my interpretation of this was when a woman was in there, aside from the little girl that was really happy during the whole tour with her brother and her mom, and then they got to the armory and they found the little girl because she had, like, disappeared and she was on the floor, like, cowering in fear, telling people, I don't like the man in the corner. Um, There was a woman that walked around during a tour, and she described to everyone else on that sort of investigation or whatever they were doing Mm -hmm. that she felt very unwanted in the armory room specifically and that that feeling intensified until... She felt like someone was choking her out, mm. like MMA style. There's two things in there. Ah, because I see the man. Yeah, there's a man that's a very scary. <laughs> he is very fucking scary. <laughs> yeah, I wrote that um, when I asked him questions about why he doesn't like certain people, because it's children and then like certain women figures and I was asking him okay I get the children like you don't want children in the armory because you don't see children as something that should be in that room it's your space yada 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 but why is it that you target only specific women and his answer was that well this is just my summation of his answer I wrote that he's not a nice soul and he did bag and he did bad things as dictated by his job title I mean if he's in the armory and there are gentry and noble feuds going on that literally was his his thing he was like the muscle behind the operation of any sort of conflict happenings resolutions uh beginning of conflicts and things like that that were going on so he was hired specifically by the Pritchard family or the families that were there to kind of be the the brains behind the the scariness and he said he keeps secrets and doesn't like those who could unearth them or stand up to him because I feel like when he was told to do things, he had a certain amount of men that he would command. And if they doubted him or asked questions about stuff, he would just be like, okay, you're done. So. Yeah, I see this weird thing that's with him that's like cowering. Its knees are in front of its body and it's like scribbly. And it has these big white eyes. Weird. 
Why is it there? I feel like it's associated to that man. Is it scared of him? Yes. Mm. Yeah. He did not do good things. So when he sees children, he's like, get out of here. And when he sees women that might actually ask him and like challenge his authority, he immediately doesn't like them. He just is overpowering them. So if that woman was of strong personality and someone that might have, as a person, you know, contradicted authority or asked questions about things, he's going to make them leave. So that's how I feel about it. You okay there, Tancho? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's scary, huh? He just, like, is in the they, corner, like, though. Tell me weird things about him. Like, like he's what? a lot worse than people perceived him to be. Mm -hmm. And that's what this thing is. It's the, like, terror that he's caused to people. Ah. Because this thing, like, screams... But it has, like, all of the people's screams that he, like, hurt. Mm. It's scary. It's yeah. gross. <laughs> yeah. He's, like, you know, and Dexter, how, like, he is, says that he, like, kills people for good. Yeah. This guy just, like, was good at killing people, so they hired him, and they're, like, here. This is your job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not a good person. Um. So, let's talk about... The other parts of um, Mr. Pritchard's family. So I think this is interesting. Colonel Edward Pritchard most seen is mostly seen. Colonel Edward Pritchard is mostly seen in the Great Hall. Mm -hmm. Notably sat on the room's dais, which is the raised sort of bench with a high table along one side of the room's wall. And that yeah, is exactly it, where we saw down. them. Yeah, because I described him before. Literally, I was like, there's this man. He's like hunched over like this, sitting on this bench. But I, at that point, didn't realize other people saw him that way or that he was sitting actually there. I know. So when they talked about this, I was like, no. Ah! Yeah, that's where I said we that saw before him. That, and then they were like, using that emf reader and i was like oh okay he's actually sitting there other people can see him because that's just how my gifts work like i just was looking at a woman that was standing behind us i'm sure if we got an emf reader she wouldn't show up on it mm -hmm. it's just how i see things <laughs> yeah well they mostly see him with his head down and he's wearing a hat yep and they <laughs> assume that he's colonel edward pritchard because you wouldn't wear a hat in someone else's house yeah unless I mean, you want to get like just there's several mr pritchards apparently uh, yeah Unless you want to be the disembodied legs walking through the front door, because that's what's going to happen. <laughs> that's going to be me. Just I'm a pair of like, knees. I'm going to wear this, like, dress, but it's going to be, like, the invisible cloak from Harry Potter, and I'll just pick up the, like, skirt and then walk around your house, and you'll just see my feet. Mm. Physically. I think you should have peg legs, because you tell me that you hate one feet. One peg leg. And just I, one. Oh, okay. And then I'll drag it. I was so just going to say. Think that it's the hash slinging slasher. <laughs> Anyways, so it's believed also to be him because he's wearing the hat and only the owner of the house would have that. Now, in 1642 to 1651, a lot of things happened, two of which were, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm just saying what they said in the video and I didn't really fact check it. But between 1642 and 1651, the English Civil War took place. And then the Black Plague also either happened in that time frame or after that. So these are the historical points and happenings of the time. Witchcraft is a cool thing. People are scared of demons, devils, evil spirits, and the English Civil War and the Black Plague. So it sounds like a great time. And you're wondering why these people put things on the outside of their houses to ward off the, the, the scary shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that shit in and of itself is terrifying. So... King Charles was trying to keep his position and title as King of England during the English Civil War of 1642 to 1651. And kind of as like a last ditch resort or one of his last like, can you please help me, sir? Because everybody hates me and I'm about to become, you know, the disembodied legs running through your kitchen. Um, he came to the Ford Manor to seek help from Colonel Pritchard, who decided against helping the king. Remember I said how there was something that he went, oh, like he was against the main idea of things? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More people don't like him. So the people that were like for the king probably were like, I don't like Let me you. curse your house. <laughs> so King Charles soon after lost the war and his royalty. So they like to say that this meeting between King Charles and 
Colonel Edward Pritchard was a pivotal part of the war, and it's said that King Charles and Colonel Pritchard replay their meeting over and over and over and over. In the place? In the meeting room. Is that who you were seeing? I don't know. I didn't see King Charles. I saw the priest man, but I don't know if a priest man would have came over with the king to talk to Colonel Pritchard with him or if he would have been a part of a meeting with the king because I just focused, like I saw other people in the room, but I focused on those two people there and it freaks me out. And it also makes sense that regardless of if this is the replay of the king anyways, meaning Colonel Edward Pritchard, then if he was a gentry, priests and clergymen and stuff like that were also a part of quote unquote the gentry. So it wouldn't be far-fetched to say that a priest is there talking to him. But if he's talking to the king and is like, this is horrible. I hate everything, but I'm not going to help you because not long live the king. Then it would probably be a weird area. Where there's dark things manipulating the memory for each person. Yes. So. Yeah. When you were talking, this dark thing was like, I can do however I want to be in this story. Uh, Isn't that fun? (laughs) Yeah. But this is where Sam and Colby are like, we want to know why Colonel Pritchard replays this moment in this room it doesn't. this it, dark thing does it's well it's He's a residual like, thing too the memory yes it's interesting mm, interesting so yeah i'm like trying to see where the actual mem- like the actual residual thing is the thing that i thought it was was that a priest was there to talk to him because one of the more important things for colonel pritchard was that he wanted to carry on his line because you know nobility gentry you need like a son He had two sons. Both of them died. Mm -hmm. And then very shortly after, his wife died too. She was only like 30. So Mm -hmm. I feel like when he was upset and talking to the priest, what I was seeing was the death of his family members or one of his family members. Because that's the like, I don't know what I'm going to do feeling. So. Yep. This dark thing or something is telling me that it has the ability to um, take the memories of the place and like stitch them together and they use weird things to hide the stitches. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So that it doesn't look. So you don't see or hear the uh, scratched part of the CD or DVD. Mm -hmm. They put something over top of it. Yeah. It's weird. It is weird. So it is residual energy, but it might not be in the right order or it might be there's something different in the memory that they're using to hide the stitches. Yeah. Which is weird. Mm -hmm. I didn't think they could do that. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, I am the memory. Mm. Fear me. Sorry. (laughs) I mean, he drained an entire room of energy for kids. Not Edward Pritchard. I'm talking this dark thing. Oh, okay. That makes much more sense. Yeah. I was like, if you want to say Edward Pritchard is Edward Pritchard's not doing it. The dark thing is, and that's why the dark thing is like, fear Uh, me. I am. Got it. Got it. Got it. I am the memory. Fear me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Edward Pritchard is like, very chill. You suck. Yeah. Get out of my house. Uh huh. (laughs) You darn demon. Yeah, darn demons. What do they call it? Your whippersnappers? Anyways, so let's move on to the addict. The witch's addict, as they called it in the in the show. Do you know why it was closed off, or do they not know that? No, they don't know why. Yeah, okay. But they make it, I mean. Spoopy. Yeah, they unearthed, do that. they unearthed it in the, in the 80s, and Sam and Colby made it spoopy by being like, it's like they weren't trying to keep people out, but they were trying to keep something from coming out. I'm going to build a house and I'm going to have this weird attic and I'm going to put all these weird burn marks and maybe a pentagram and then I'm going to just seal it off. You should put a Furby in the middle of the (sighs) pentagram. Yeah, in pieces. Oh no, I think it should be whole, but like in half talk where like one of the eyes is like slightly closed. Or one of the eyes is hanging from the ceiling. (laughs) I'm better at this than you. (laughs) (laughs) Though I had a, I had a ladybug Furby when I was little. I Furbies loved are horrifying. Ladybugs. My cat used to like the Furby, so it would bring the Furby up, throw it against my sister's door because he likes my sister. And it was 3 a.m. every single time, the witch's hour, if you don't know. And it would just say, Mommy! Because it was a baby Furby at 3 a.m. I am aware. I watched your cat. Uh, what was it? Um, Kitty. Yeah, yeah. May he rest in peace. Uh, literally. And when I was sleeping over the house, in the middle of nowhere, I would just hear a Furby start talking. And I was like, Mommy, feed me. 
was not okay. And no one, none of my family would have the gusto to get up to do it. So my sister would have to wake up at 3 a.m. and turn the Furby off. I just was very scared. And then when I went down into the basement to find it, Kitty was on top of it doing some weird ritual seance bullshit in the basement. So to wake up in the stranger's house in the middle of the night. Stranger, yeah. To find mm-hmm. it. Yeah, uh-huh. To be a Furby, I was like, there's more going on here that I don't know. The Furby's also really old, so sometimes it gets stuck and just goes, ah. <laughs> There's a reason why those things are scary. <laughs> horrifying. So the witch's attic, it can't be more horrifying than the Furby experience, but yeah, it was brick and plastered all over the door frame that Sam and Colby, like I said, are like, is it keeping something in? This is their creative uh, embellishment, but the room is indeed covered in one of the three apotroperic marks, which is the burn marks, or they call witches marks. And they say that the witches marks are to ward off evil, right? And to keep light within a darkness. And if this place is an addict, like we talked about, I'm thinking, okay, it's an addict. There's like one little, maybe. It's dark. Exactly. So <laughs> addicts need way more marks everywhere because it's dark and it's an attic so they also the place- closed it off so there's no light up there oh well it makes sense that they closed it off though too because if they're like man we're gonna do some renovations demons are gonna climb out of the ceiling yeah so you gotta <laughs> make sure they don't get out if they're in there so they're like extra witches marks like extra frosting extra sprinkles they should probably should have got is there a window in there to the window i don't know i don't remember it was dark <laughs> <laughs> oh So the lady guide talks about how there are so many burn marks in such one small space, leading the people that are there now to believe that the people who originally made all of these burn marks are people that were trying to ward off demonic possession. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 do. I don't know which button it is. I'm not going to try it. I know which button it is. (laughs) Well, So... Yeah, I thought that was interesting that they said uh, that they believe the person that put all of those burn marks on there was trying to ward off demonic possession. Um, Why is it interesting? Because in our part one podcast and maybe a little bit in the video, I'm not sure, we talk about a woman that was upstairs in the attic Mm -hmm. crying over a child. Yeah. And in the video, I didn't say this. And also in the podcast, I also didn't say it because I was like, I don't want to talk about it because it's weird. But they showed me the woman from our Salem trip that you guys will learn about at some point in a vlog and podcast at a later time. Um, The one with the scary hair. No. Otherwise, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. On the ghost tour that we went on, they talked about a woman at this, I think it was like the town watering hole, basically. There's a monument now. Um, in the middle of the city where she got whipped? Yeah. Okay. Well, they thought that she was, well, she literally had like a lot of children and I'm sorry, but if you had a lot of children and my husband was like, I want to eat beef and stew for dinner, I'd be like, yeah, well you get cornbread, fucking suck it. He was like, my wife's being abstinent. I think she's possessed by the devil because she like wouldn't make his potato stew for him, which is stupid. And then the priest was like, man. Oh, did they think that she was possessed? Yes. Oh. Because that's what I was telling you in our podcast. What is that thing called when you get depressed after you have a child? Postpartum depression. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling you about that. Exactly. But in the video and in the podcast and then again yesterday, they were like, you need to talk about the lady from Salem because they thought she had a demonic uh, possession. Not only because she was like, I have five children and I'm sad because I just had another child and I have postpartum depression. So I don't fucking care if you want beef stew. I'm giving you cornbread. Suck it. They were like, no, she's being obstinate towards her husband and she's possessed by the demon. But really what she had was postpartum depression. Yeah. So, so I this feel. this woman had the similar thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which just doing this research, I know we speculated about it Is last time. Is that why time. she's doing the spell? Because people told her she was possessed? Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> I think so. And they like, I literally, we've only talked about it and I haven't really like solidified any like of my ideas or hypotheses about it. But yesterday they were like, you need to say this because the fact that this woman literally is saying there are so many witch marks in here because they were trying to ward off demonic possession. Mm. And that's exactly what people thought postpartum depression was. Yeah. And if you guys have no idea what we're talking about, when Sam and Colby went up into the attic, I just start telling Liv that there's this 
person that is like see-through sitting on the bed and i see she has like long dark hair she's in like some sort of like dark clothing and she's sitting looking down mumbling things to herself and i was like that doesn't feel like a person because she's literally i can see through her so i'm not sure what that is or what's happening Mm -hmm. so Liv goes on and talks to the actual soul because this is like an imprint of her just like a fingerprint that she left in this attic and she started telling Liv that she had a child she was very upset that they lost her child so she was in these like morning clothes up there and we hypothesized that she did all of these witches marks herself and was basically saying some sort of protection spell sitting on the bed yeah because there's this horrible black mass that is like trapped in the walls and in the floors and we think that she's linked to keeping that darkness there but it might be the imprint of her is yeah the imprint of her because in heaven or spirit she's different it's she is there it's just yeah anyways i just wanted to talk about that because that just reinforces our theories that we had in the video and last week's podcast so i mean i don't think we'll ever yeah, really it makes know sense. but right because i got the same thing <laughs> and there's a little bed up the... there too so if there's a woman that's like acting weird they'll just be like okay yeah i just didn't get the connection to her being demonically possessed because that's like weird <laughs> yeah well it, it's because she wasn't but they might have thought then back then given the fact that at the beginning of this podcast we talked about how they believed in all of that scary spiritual stuff so mm-hmm. right yeah anyways makes sense that's what i got for you my dudes did you like the history that i summed up that you can watch also on our well on sam and colby's channel we don't talk about it but we got part one and part two of our blind reactions to all of the spoopy stuff that's happening and that was spoopy because it's when they were like, Colonel Edward Pritchard is seen in this room replaying certain things. I was like, no, why? I don't like it. This is scary. Yeah. So if you guys have gotten this far and you haven't seen our part one, you should probably go check that podcast out where we probably confuse the hell out of you because that was <laughs> at the point where we don't know the history. So we are unsure of what we are, who are we are talking to. But make sure you check out that podcast. Come back here and listen to this again because maybe it'll make more sense. But if you guys like this, we uh, have a Patreon where we may or may not be reacting to the, what is it, the first part of Sam and Colby's video. So you're going to tell all the Patreon people who their new friends are going to be that are going to join. Yes. So if you're interested in joining Patreon, also we do readings. I'm a little booked out, but M isn't. So if you want to meet M and have a tarot reading of some sort of spectacular aptitude, go for it. You can find the link in the show notes to book a reading with M or book a reading really far out with me if there's any available. If there's not, I'm sorry. Uh, It's a fun time. So you can join our Patreon to talk to hundreds of other people that are interested in all of these super cool things where you can join our Discord server and talk to us too because we're on there but without further ado we would like to thank our patreons because they've made it possible for us to sit here and talk about spoopy things to you and i'm sure they would be more than happy to become best friends with you as well so beth ann fair maria Haley, indra faith alex alex caitlin argila i think it's Ar- argelia 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 sasuke underscore magician i like that one <laughs> Sierra, Lori, Mercedes, Christy, Terry, Christina, Sky, Mary, U.S. Dutch Kitty, Sheba, Calloway, Elise, Stephanie, Jay, Kiana, Tiger, Lily, Chloe, Kaylee, Camilla, Melissa, Kiosha, Vanessa, Natalie, Juan, Gracie, Michelle, Mia, Joshua, Miranda, Veronica, Abigail, Parker. I do not want to do a software update right now. I am talking about the patrons. Abigail Parker, Brenda, Jennifer, Brianne, Brian, Lauren, Little Universe, Shun, Wyatt De- DeVille. We're just going to call you Wyatt. Esther, Brianna, Salvador, Hannah, Alex, Dalton, Rhea, Natasha, Tiana, Lizzie, Izzy, Calla, Kat, Sydney, Ariana, Kate, Ashley, Anna, Paisley, Paula, Sharon, Melissa, Hannah, Raggle, Maggie, which is literally just the funniest thing ever. Diana, Catherine, Tuesday, Tessa, Sarah, Cole, Mama Llama, also 
literally awesome. Danielle, Susie, Az Aziza, I think it's Aziza, which is also super sick. Lisa, Charlotte, Caleb, Logan, Megan, Allie, Leslie, Danielle, Jason, Practical, Sapphic, Samantha, Jay, Mackenzie, Angelina, Emily, Justine, da, 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 da. Z, Kathy, Ashley, Veronica, Aubriana, Surly, Joseph, Haven, I is duck one. I thought you were videotaping me again. Eureka Havoc, Reek Hitch Rick, which is interesting. So Rec, I think it's Rec. Baby Chim Chim, Gibby, TMQ927, Danielle, Lexi, Petra, Liam, Jay, Evie, Pamela, Elizabeth, Lucas, the spider fanatic. Lucas, what's up? I like your spiders on Discord. Caitlin, Taryn, Claire, Jasmine, Emily, Lola, Cora, Keely, Lacey, Awkward, Issa, Gentari, Gentare, Gentare, Gentra, Ashley, Lanita, Kara, Sandrin, Presley, Emmy, Kira, Jennifer, Amanda, Paige, Maggie, Rena, Samantha, Clarissa, Laura, Cherish, Charlie, Ashley, Brittany, Miss, Alice, Forgetting Oblivion, Nelson, Sarah, Ashley, Sarah, Jade, Angie, Julie, Colleen, Synth, Sherry, Hannah, Ryan, Amy, Raquel, Isabel, Tasha, V, Fanny, JCLO, Leslie, Shelly, Grisha, Jay, Danielle, I think it's Donnelly, Donnelly, Jasmine, Julie, Brittany, Paige, Marin, Christina, Christopher, Sarah, Jasmine, again, Ooh, there's two Jasmines. Only one has a, a Z spelling. Connor, Alicia, Vanna, Amber, Sitali, Joylin, Paige, Brooklyn, Courtney, Caillou. I struggled with that one last time. Rita, Alana, Abril, Aki, Ka Karina, Surya, Sergio, Katya, Asteria, Stephanie, Gaymeyer, Brooke, Lee Tao, M, Kayla, Ashley, Catherine, Dallas, Sarah, Alisa, Gannon, Veronica, Cynthia, Chris Von Kleist, Emily, Meredith, Jim, Lindsay, Beth, Ashley, Annalie, Tara, Rosie, Brandy, Skullstorm, Agaharadas, Tiara, Hazel, Marcy, Mia, Isabel, Rosara, Megan, Faith, Jessica, Yassi, Glow, Francesca, Amba, Brooke, Kaylee, Brooke, Ellie, Mia, we're so close, Flavende, Leanne, Ocarona, Liliana, Anya, Abby, Kayla, Sarah, April, Ashley, Cassie, Joanne, Keisha, Helen, Natalie, Alec, Sarah, Amanda, Stephanie, Tuna, Izzy, Katrin, Super Aru, Alexa, Caitlin, Shareholder, Sophia, Bria, Katie, Leanne, Bees, Brittany, Kendall, Shandy, Riley, Naz, Otakasuma, Otakusuma, yeah, instead of Korean, I'm trying really hard, Miana, Liliana, Jay, Lacretia, Brianna, Kristen, Kima, Samantha, Vicky, Erica, Ian, Vanessa, McKenna, Cindy, Kylie, Mev, Trinity, Cass, Anthony, Violet, Peyton, Mac, Jenny, Laurel, Bradley, Sandy, Nas, Sherry, Sushi, Anita, Caddy, Katie, I'm so sorry, Katie, Charles, Holly, Krista, Abby, Malake, oh, there's so many of you. So when are we going to stop doing shout outs on our Patreon? 350 or 400? <laughs> That is the question. I know, but I feel like if we say that we're going to stop doing the shout outs at a certain number, then they're just going to not do it. Not do what? They're not going to go to 400. They're going to be like, we want everyone to say our Listen, names. Listen, Patreon people, <laughs> we are about to release more goals. So if you reach the goals, then, then, then it'd be good. Plus, do you really want to listen to us talk about names for <laughs> 20 to 30 minutes long? <laughs> I could put your names in the show notes. What do you think about that? Is there a character count? Maybe. Yeah. Because <laughs> we ran into that on YouTube. <laughs> I could just do a monthly Patreon podcast. Well, they're already shout getting out. shout out on YouTube. Yeah, but I could so put it to like dumb music. Like try mm -hmm. to rap your names. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let us know in the comments if you're able to no. leave a uh, comment in Apple Podcasts. Good thing you're not. Leave us a review. Because we don't have time know. to make a rap for each time someone adds their name to our Patreon There's list. There's a really big dead spider in the corner of your basement. At least it's dead. R.I.P. My dude. It's spider season here. Guys. It's not spooky season. It's spider season. It's almost October 4th. And the reason why I'm saying October 4th is because we're planning on doing a live stream with the haunted side on his YouTube channel. So you should uh, go check us out. On October 4th, which is Tuesday, is it like 10 p.m. EST? Yeah. Or 7 p.m. It's 10 p.m. PST? Eastern time, and then he's in Nevada. So, um, and I think it's okay to say it's that 7 he's in Nevada. Well, yeah. Because he talks about it, but 
It's listed on his YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. It's 7 p.m. I have a time converter on here because I had talked to a lot of people from around the world. 7 p.m. PST. Yeah. My dudes, go we... check us out. We're going to uh, go talk to our BFF, Patrick, from the haunted side. Hey, girl. Hey. What's up? I was listening to, um, if Patrick is listening to this, Patrick. Patrick. I was, I was He's li- definitely not listening after we listed like 20,000 <laughs> patrons. No, I'll tell him. I'll tell him that he has to listen all the way to all the, end. the way through all of our patron names. I'm not gonna tell him when he has a shower. <laughs> He'll just have to find it. Oh um, gosh, I was listening to what is it called? Zach Brown Band because we started singing Chicken Fried. But I'm also extremely, extremely nervous about singing in front of people, and I was not in a cool band, so I wanted to sing Chicken Fried with you on the last live. And I made a post a couple days ago about the weird things that I'll say that awkwardly do something for the rest of my life. That's one of those things that I, I stay up at night about, about is the awkwardness of our first live. So hopefully it won't be so awkward doing a collab Wasn't live. Wasn't that awkward? What the hell are you talking about? It seemed pretty normal to me. No, no, no. no. I, I was in a fever dream that entire time of absolute just awkwardness. You also probably got like two hours of sleep because that's just who you are as a person. Yeah, that was a very t- hard time on yeah, first live. So hopefully this time I will be well rested and not such an awkward taco. <laughs> and maybe if we sing Zach Brown together, it'll be great. But I also might be awkward again. But that's one thing that I'm haunts me. Tell them my... weird secrets about me like I play DDR. You didn't even tell them a secret about me. Yeah. I told them that you were a Leo. That's not a secret. It's too much pressure. You want to know who was awkward? It was me. No, you were What just secrets quiet. do I tell? You tell everyone all of your secrets. That's how you keep it from people having I things against you. I can tell people you. that you like butt rubs. But I, do. I don't think you want me to tell people that. <laughs> That is true. <laughs> I think DDR is less embarrassing, though, of a secret than butt rubs. But butt it's rubs. not even just butt rubs. If I was an animal, I would be that animal that literally sits on top of you and is like, you're just a cat in your past life. Only cats want the butt scratches. I, but it, it's not exclusive to butts. I like feet rubs. But I like head cats. rubs. Well, okay. But that's all. I just <laughs> want to be petted by cats. someone that is. That is picked by me. Cats. Not a random stranger. Literally. Otherwise, that's illegal. Describing a cat. You were a cat. You I know. like belly rubs. Cats usually don't like belly rubs. You guys keep calling her a uh, golden retriever. She's actually a male orange cat. I know that doesn't roll off the tongue I as much. I hate you. If you say anything about orange cats, that's you. What the hell are you talking about? I have this theory that orange cats, especially male orange cats, are unusually friendly. I had an orange cat and he was not unusually friendly. Then you got the fluke. Okay. Are you sure he was all orange? He was orange and white. Was he a tabby cat? He had stripies. What did you do to him? (laughs) I didn't do anything to him. That dude lived to be like 21 years old. My mom got him from a barn. You should talk to his soul and ask him why he was so sassy. He was an orange cat. He had the perfect time to be friendly. Well, he was a barn cat and his mother didn't like him when he was born. (laughs) Seems like a lot of trauma. Yeah. <laughs> he was genetically or like at birth attached to his brother by his back foot. His brother lost his leg and got taken home by like some other person that was like, oh, three-legged cat, I'll take it. And then no one wanted Clancy, so they just kept him there. And then his mother, when he would try to nurse, would throw him across the hallway. Mm-hmm. Cause she was like, you're weird. Get away from my children. And he was like, man. So my mom took him home in her riding hat. And she's like, I just don't want him to die in the barn because like. He has a leg, but his mom's not going to feed him. So what is he going to oh do? Gosh. Someone's going to kill him. He should at least have a warm place to die. And he would just. And then he didn't. For 21 years. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. Only orange cat. And he cat. wasn't a friendly orange cat. <laughs> I mean, he was okay. But I remember as a child, I would want to just like have him sit on my chest while I was trying to go to sleep so that he could purr and I could pet his head. And then he'd do that thing where immediately unhinges his jaw out of nowhere and just <laughs> cobra strikes your hand tries to eat you in one bite yeah but sniffles does that now too and i don't think sniffles is an unfriendly cat but she also yeah but she's not an orange cat she's not gonna go up to some stranger and be like oh my god look at my belly touch it and i swear it's not a a trap because i'm an orange cat i don't know how to do traps sniffles is very much like clancy only clancy was an orange cat and he was a dude yeah you got the fluke oh okay tell me tell me that i'm wrong also if you guys want to leave us a review you can give us some dad jokes about orange cats. Oh, <laughs> Do you have a dad joke? You have to have a dad joke to share. Yeah, instead of posting it on any sort of other platform, my dad just texted me. Mm. And he's like, hey, 
I watched your last video. It was pretty good. I just wanted to make sure that if other people send in their dad jokes to you, that you put them in a dad a base. I don't get it. A dad a base of dad jokes. Get it? Like instead of dad a base, it was dad a base. <laughs> he, I sent it to you. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. You're I'm just going me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm laughing is because I got you to explain it. <laughs> Great. Well, there you go. The one, the, the, the dad joke from the dad of me. Of me. <laughs> Her dad. <laughs> yep. Dad at explaining things. So. so, yeah. If you guys like this type of content, make sure you tune in to next week where we're going to be talking about probably our ghost hunt that we went on. Spoiler alert. Because we went on one. It was but, uh, a good time. There was bats everywhere. <laughs> Liv's scared of bats, apparently. I'm not scared of bats. I just, <sighs> if I'm going to be around them, I would like to have my hair. I freaking love bats. In a hat. Freaking love bats. You always do that. <laughs> okay, bye. We got, and then you go, I freaking love bats. <laughs> I hate you. You're doing it wrong. Gotta correct you. <laughs> so do you see the several shadow men that are now in my basement? <laughs> no. Also, Hotman. Shadow men. Wow. <laughs> With the Kroger Plus card, it's easy to get lower than low prices, which adds up to big savings for the win. You also earn fuel points on every purchase, which means you win big at the pump. The Kroger Plus card. All you do is win big, big savings. Sign up now at Kroger.com and start saving. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Fuel restrictions apply. Choose from a great selection of digital coupons and use them up to five times in one transaction. Check our app for details. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Come here. Natural Balance presents a head-tilting, tail-wagging audio experience made for dogs. Want to play? Good dog. This ad was scientifically designed to make your dog happy. Just like Natural Balance dog food. Visit naturalbalanceinc.com to learn more.